God bless you, uh, everyone. I just, this is Pastor Robert Porter from New Life Christian Center Ministries. I just want to say to you that uh, New Life Christian Center Ministries is here to help restructure your thought life and to create uh, a new way of thinking in your life. It's here to help move you forward in the things of God and to show you that you are in the position of leadership the way God wants you to be. So join me, listen to uh, some of the teachings and uh, learn how that God wants you to move forward. So God bless you and I'll see you soon. Good morning, God bless you and welcome uh, to uh, our Sunday broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm Pastor Robert Porter from New Life Christian Center Ministries. And um, we're going to get started right into what God has for us. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you and we bless you for uh, this word today, Lord God. Let it be all of you and none of me. And I thank you, Lord God, for the transformation that is doing in our lives. And we just give you praise, Lord God, and, and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, for the last couple of weeks, until, I'm, until the Lord tells me to stop teaching this, um, I've been teaching on living in the power of God, living in the power of God. And um, I'm going to jump right into this thing. So as I was teaching this, and um, as I've been teaching this, I, I, the Lord has really been dealing with me concerning living in the power of God. Of God, living in the power of God. So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on that right there. And I'm going to get back into talking about altars, platform, and also, you know, talking about the things of the spirit as well. You know, I'm j just try to clear some things up. But right now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to nail this thing to where uh, we understand why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. So I'm going back to this now. Living in the power of God, we must understand, and living in the power of God is going to require some things from you. For number one, we must understand, first of all, let, let's turn here. In Romans um, chapter one, and I'm going to start at the 11th verse. Okay, it says, <clears throat> For I long to see you, that I may impart in you some spiritual gifts. Impart, impart some spiritual gifts. To the end, you may be established. So, what I've been teaching on is so that we won't, so that, how can I put it, so that we can understand the establishment that God wants us to be in in order to walk in his power. See, there's, there's a certain place we have to be. But because of not understanding certain spiritual principles, we become uh, ignorant to the devices of the enemy and ignorant to what God wants us to have. And so what I'm trying to do is to bring clarity so we can understand, so we can start operating uh, in the power that God wants us to be in. Let me finish. Let me go ahead and finish reading this. In 12, it says, that is that I may be a comfort together with you by the multiple faith, both of you and me. And it says, now I would not have you ignorant. Brother, that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hither that I may have some fruit among you also, even as among the other Gentiles. In other words, God is looking to bear fruit through us. And in, in order for us to bear the fruit that God wants us to have, we cannot be ignorant. We have 
to know and understand. In other words, we got to learn how to do things on purpose. And let me give you an example of that. And mechanic, when he goes to work on a <laughs> an engine, he has a specific tool purposely to get that part or to do or exchange or whatever. So he specifically knows what he has to do. Well, if you need a flathead screwdriver, you know, uh, you know you can't use a flathead screwdriver on certain parts where a Phillips screwdriver may work where a flathead wouldn't. Well, in other words, that's, that's how, that's the mindset that we have to have. How and what do we need in order to move forward and to be able to live in this power that God wants us to move into. Now, let's dig more into this. To live in the power of God, you must understand a transformation is important. It's important. A transformation is important. That means that you have to, pres have to present yourself or operate, <coughs> excuse me, in the rivers that flows from God. In other words, you have to position yourself and flow how God wants you to flow. Well, how is that done? Well, it's done by yielding to the Holy Spirit. See, you have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, Romans 1.16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power. Do you see that? It is the power. Now we're talking about living in the power of God. For it is the power. Nobody can give an example like Jesus did when he walked this earth living in the power of God. You see? And it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. You see that? Unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jews first and also uh, to the Greek. So the, the power, first of all, we must understand that, and it goes back again, Lord Jesus, to Romans 12, 2. Uh, renewing your mind. Be, be, be not conformed, but renewing your mind. So it goes back to uh, uh, coming in and letting the, the, the transformation of God's words work on the inside of you that the word of God is so impacted in you that it starts flowing out like a river. Jesus is an example of that. You know, Jesus is an example of that. He was, him and God was so uh, uh, connected, so, so, so uh, 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 intertwined with each other. Whatever Jesus did, you, you saw the Father. So, this is how we have to position ourselves to flow in the power of God. Now, I'm going to say this. Jesus said before he left, as I do, you can do as well. He didn't say it as, like I just said it, but I'm just paraphrasing that, that he said, the greater works that I do, you can do also. So, that means that you can live and work and operate in the power of God. You can do that. Now, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, you must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches us to live in the power. So the Holy Spirit, he's a teacher. So certain things, he will teach you what to do, how to do, and, and, and when you should do it. He's the teacher of, of, of God's divine order and divine uh, uh, governmental order. He's the teacher of it. So basically, when you become a Christian, you must understand there's a transformation going place and there's a level of teaching that you must continually to stay in. You must be teachable. You must be teachable. And he says, there are... There are things that you must go through. There's a transformation that you must go through. So, now, when we live in, in the power of God, God is going to make 
changes in your life. There's a transformation. There are things in, in, in the valleys sometimes that you're going to have to go through in order for you to get to the promised land. If you look at the children of Israel, they went through the valley. They went through certain things. Well, that is designed to see how and where your heart is towards the things of God. You see, are you going to turn back to your own devices? Or are you going to lean into God and let God show you exactly what it's going to take for you to come out of uh, the situations that you need? Now, the Holy Ghost is going to teach you faith. He's going to anoint you to walk in the power. And then he says, uh, when, when you walk in the power of God, there comes a time when you operate in the power of God where God's glory just takes over. In other words, when you are in a position, when you when you operate in faith, when you uh, uh, are anointed to do what you have to do, then it opens the door for God's glory to manifest. When God's glory manifests, it's over. It, it, it is it's just over, just like water to wine. God's glory manifests. Just like Jesus raised uh, 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 Lazarus from the dead, glory, God's glory manifested. Jesus said what he had to do and he backed up and he allowed God the Father to do the rest. This is how we have to operate when we operate in, in, the, to, when we operate in the power of God, to live in the power of God. So, now, there's you, there's, there's the Holy Ghost. There's Jesus and there's the Father, right? There's the Father. So there's four elements, right? It's going to take you. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. It's going to take Jesus and it's going to take the Father for us to operate in God's full power. When God first created Adam and Eve, he, uh, uh, he's given them everything that they needed. It wasn't nothing left out. The only time things are left out is when you're unaware of what you have. See, it's when you are unaware <coughs> that all you have to do is to apply yourself in another way, you'll be surprised of the changing of the outcome that you receive. In other words, he said, uh, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, that holds true. You know, you cannot continue to do the same thing and expect a different and expect, expect the same result. See, when you are living in the power of God, first of all, you realize that it's not you. It's God's the one who is giving you the insight and the power to overcome the very thing that uh, that you have been going through. And I'm going to start using the word valley that you've been dealing with. Some of us have been in the valley too long. It's time for us to come out the valley. You see, it's time for us to walk in our promise that God has for us. But it's because we have been uh, uh, ignorant to the things of God. And we have been accepting what the enemy has been saying to us through thoughts, through temptation, and, and, you know, and we have been listening to the wrong kind of wisdom that has put us and kept us in the position of being in that valley that we have been trying so hard to get out of. Now, listen, there's a place in the power of God that you're going to have to get out of the way. You got to shut yourself down and put God there. You see, well, how is that? Through prayer. You see, through prayer. <clears throat> like I said, the, one of the biggest enemies that we face is ourselves. Because we always, we, how can I put it? We always uh, 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 figuring or trying to think how we can go about doing something or, let me put it like this, or even helping God. We, well, the truth is, by you yielding to God, you are allowing him 
to be able to help you through what you need to be or go through or get through this valley that you're going through. You must shut down. You must put yourself in a position to let God create the flow coming through him. Coming, coming from him through you. That's what, I want, that's what I'm trying to say. So we cannot afford to be ashamed of what God is doing by our actions. We got to yield to the will of God and allow him to be able to do the things that uh, he wants to do in our lives. Now, uh, my past teachings have been showing you the importance of this. Talking about platforms and all this, it has been showing you the, the importance of this. See, because if the enemy can keep you in a certain position and keep you in that valley mindset, right? If he can keep you there, that way uh, uh, he can hinder you from actually destroying his work or moving ahead the way that God designed you to do. As a Christian, you will, you will always, always, you will always, you will always be surrounded by the good news as a Christian. You will always have the gospel. You will always have uh, 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 the Holy Ghost. You will always have Jesus right there by you. Jesus said he would never leave you or forsake you. You always have, but the, but the problem has been is that have you, where, where and what have you been focused on? What have you been doing? You see, they keep you in that position that in that valley stage that you have been locked into. <clears throat> the system that you will always, God's system, let me put it like this, the gospel, God's system will always get you out and it will always rescue you if you will allow it to happen. Now, I have said a mouthful in such a short period of time. And um, let me say this. We have to come to an understanding as well that the gospel is about life. It ain't about death. Everything we dealing with God, everything about God is about life. If there are uh, uh, some elements in your life that is not producing life or producing fruit the way you want to, that means that we have to go back and determine what is stopping that. And that goes into the legal ramification, which I'm going to be teaching on a little bit later. But I need to talk about right now, living in the power of God, what is it? So living in the power of God is, being, is, is allowing the gospel to freely operate and to work in your life without any hindrances or without anything stopping God's work from being done. You see, so now we need to go and look and think about it. We need to go back and think about it. Now, um, because of how we've been programmed, and I want to watch what I say carefully, because of how we've been programmed, um, we have turned God's word uh, to make it of none effect in our lives because of how we've been programmed. And I said in previous teachings that um, we are the ones that allow God to come in. God cannot come into our lives unless we allow him to. He will never force himself. He will never tempt you. He will never do any of that stuff that the enemy would do. He will never do that. So when we live in, in the power of God, right, we must understand something else. Right. We must understand the power of the resurrection of Christ as well. You see, because um, 
1 Corinthians 1.18. Let me turn there. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 17, 1, 17, chapter 1, <coughs> verse 17. <coughs> it says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. You see that? Not with wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see that? So, the wisdom of this world is designed to make uh, the cross of Christ to be none effect. And we see the fruits of it. You see, we see the fruits of it. You know, uh, sickness, death, uh, poverty. Uh, we, we see the fruits of it, you see. And that's what the enemy wants us to operate in. In other words, we have the power to avoid it all that God is doing. And, and let me read on. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perished foolishness. To them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the what? Power of God. You see that? It's the power of God. So we, we need the word of God to live in his power. And then the Holy Ghost come and teaches us to confirm, to bring revelation in our heart that, that we are operating in the power that God wants us to operate. We are the only ones that can allow this thing to happen. It cannot happen unless we give God permission to do it. You see? So we can't sit back and say, oh, God is going to do it. Well, God will do it. And I've said this in the past. God will work with you. He's not going to work for you. So in other words, it's a joint collaboration between you and him to work together to bring forth the power that he wants in your life. Now, <clears throat> I read this before and I said this, I guess, in the last teaching. What is the power of God? Let's talk about that. The cross. That's one. Two, the Holy Ghost. That's two. Three, the gospel. Four, the kingdom. Five, the word of God. So we need all of those, all of those five elements in order for us to manifest us living in that power that God has called us to live in. Now, uh, the Holy Ghost is qualified to teach us the power of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost uh, can teach you about the power of God. He is the power of God, God Almighty. Remember in Genesis, God said, what did the, what did the Spirit of God do? He made, he created. He is the power of God. So we must come to an understanding that the power of God is teaching us how to operate in the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can't be ignorant of that. You see, we, we can't be ignorant of that. We, we have to hold fast. We have to hold uh, 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 strong to the cross, the Holy Ghost, the gospel, God's kingdom, which is his government, and the word. See? Now, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of four things. Truth, life, faith, and power. See, when we operating in the power of God, we're operating in truth. We bring life. We're operating in faith and we're seeing God's power manifest in our lives. Hallelujah. So now, in saying this, if you take what uh, I'm saying to you and, and conveying to you uh, this Sunday and start connecting the dots based on how the enemy is trying to stop you and see, what I did, I have, by the Spirit of God, I have given you a comparison. 
So I'm just laying this all out. I'm laying this all out to you so you can make the quality decision of what you want to do or or how or what type of life you want. You're going to have to make this quality decision. You see, nobody can do it for you but yourselves. So now all I'm doing is is evening the playing ground, you see, because now here it is. 24 hours, seven days a week, the enemy is presenting to you world. Ah, oh, man. He, he's just constantly giving you the world, what's going on in the world, what's happening, what's not happening. Uh, and all you see is death, 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 destruction, <clears throat> stealing. Uh, uh, all, I mean, all you seeing is a life of destruction, death, hard time, struggle, sickness. This is all you are seeing. You see, this is all you see. But when uh, we take and we start shutting some of that stuff down by, uh, 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 by the word of God and, and start living uh, how God is uh, uh, teaching us to live through him, right? The stuff that's going on in this world should not or would not be able to uh, touch you or be able to have any effect on you because your source isn't this world, your job or any other, your investments or whatever. Your source is God. You know if you do what you're supposed to do, God is going to give you what you need in order to maintain. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close here. Something that I need to find. Hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Give me a minute. Okay. John, uh, John 13, chapter 13, verse 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that scripture may be, that scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me have lifted up his heels against me. Now I tell you, before it comes, that when it comes to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I sent receive me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So God is saying that he's going to choose the person that he wants to send to you to help you move forward, to get out of the valley. But in the same token too, he's also saying that you need to believe on him, God. If you believe God has sent someone uh sent someone to, to uh, pull you out that valley that you're in. Uh, if you believe that what God has done wasn't in vain. If you believe that uh, uh, God does not want you in that position uh, for in that position that you have been stuck in for a while. So if you believe that, if you believe it, God will truly send uh, the help you need in order to get you out of what you have been in. You have to receive him in your heart, in your soul, and you got to receive him. See, you got to believe that the Holy Ghost is there to teach you, to help you, to move you forward. You have to believe this. If you don't believe this, if you don't, we're gonna, you're going to have a hard time distinguishing what is truth and what is a lie. See, 
at the end, the fruit of it, you will know what the fruit of it is. So we have to believe that God is the one who, who, who wants to uh, uh, deliver us. We have to believe God is the one that has sent Jesus to, to uh, 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 save us from our sin. We have to believe that we aren't here by accident. We have a divine appointment by God of the reason why we're here. We have to believe this. This is Pastor Robert Porter from New Life Christian Center Ministries saying that uh, my time is up for now, but God bless you. We will pick this up again next week. God bless you. I will talk to you soon.